Hello and welcome to Amaro's Intuitive Studio on YouTube. This is your star select a stack session. Stack number one is going to represent the soul, spirit, the whole big picture or divine mystery. Stack number two is the portal of water, autumn, feelings, emotions, healing. Stack number three represents fire, summer, passion, creativity, direction. Stack number four represents earth, material resources, the manifest, um, winter. And number five is going to represent air, decisions, ideas, thinking, spring, the mind, and communication. What you're going to do is choose one of the cards, which everyone is calling out to you and then look below in the description or the comments and choose the timestamp that matches up with the choice that you made. Please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, and to comment and let me know which one you chose. So make your choice and hit the timestamp below. stack number one welcome back so you were attracted to the number the number one uh the concept of spirit the divine mystery the big picture and so that either means you weren't feeling drawn to one of the specific uh energies but that or or maybe you just want to focus everything and kind of bring all your energies together whatever drew you to this particular stack we're gonna get started. So the very first thing I'm gonna pull from here, that's that's for later, is this. This is the Chakra Wisdom Tarot, and that's gonna be the center of the of your entire session. This is you or your situation, okay? And the Ace of Coins is like a brand new seed of something that you planted, hopefully something lovely, it's going to be some sort of resource um, or physical manifestation. Something that you've planted in the past is going to start to sprout up from the ground. Um, also, you see that this is like a, I think I believe this is red, a red card, yeah. And that represents the chakra, the, um, the chakra system. This deck in particular, um, has a really cool way of laying the cards out according to the chakra system. So I do actually utilize that. So pay attention. Um, this is going to be your root. That's the lower part of your body, um, your legs, your feet, um, where you sit. Or we're also talking about your home, your foundation, your security. Um, this is kind of like the the base needs before you can actually channel your energy into something else something brand new is coming forward and if you're not prepared for that or you feel a little bit worried by that message because you don't feel prepared you have absolutely no idea what that might be start to ground yourself now and that's and that will um that will like create a fertile soil Okay, that means that when this sprouts up, you're gonna be ready to take care of it. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna pull out is the Divine Feminine Oracle. Mistress of the Labyrinth, my soul knows the way, and the only way out is through. Okay, so you know that wherever this is taking you, um, you're gonna probably have to, oh man, I don't know if it's dig. Consider yourself a gardener, okay? Consider yourself a gardener in this situation. You have to cultivate, this is your little baby seedling. Your soul knows how to take care of it, okay? And there may be some unexpected 
I don't want to say twists and turns, but there may be some unexpected lessons that come up, okay? So maybe this is a lesson. Hopefully you've learned it. So whatever is coming up is going to be something that you really want to experience and something that you're going to enjoy having created. The next card out um, is going to be the Journey of Love Oracle. Okay, so I think I even forgot to totally <laughs> to mention this, The this divine feminine kind of represents what you chose. Um, the This is what's guiding over you, watching you. She's representing also um, the divine mystery in the big picture. Okay, so she's the one who's walking, watching out for that entire thing. This is who the, the card that you're going to identify with the most doesn't mean the one that's going to um, resonate with you the most, but the card that is most important to you besides the self is this one because this is the card, uh, the deck that is representing what you chose, okay? That stop, or I'm sorry, that top uh, area of the star, that top point where you're focusing. This is the deck that I chose to represent that part of the star in this actual layout. Okay, she's not actually um, obviously laid out that way, but she is sitting up here watching over. So that's that's what's watching over you and protecting you at this time. So now when we pull out the, the Journey of Love Oracle, this is feeling, healing, and resilience. Okay, this is your feeling, healing, and resilience. It's the one, if, if nothing else you take from this, that there is something, a seed is, is coming up out of the soil, something you planted. And you're going to want to make sure that it's something that you want. Okay? So prepare yourself. Anchor yourself. Ground yourself now. Now, the feeling, healing, and resilience. This may be something that you've been experiencing. Um, this may be the past. This may be the present or the future. I'm going to just read from the guidebook for a moment. She is the moon number 21. The light of the moon ebbs and flows. The wisdom of patience is not about waiting around for something to happen rather than getting up and getting it done. The wisdom of patience is that of the gardener who consults the lunar calendar. Didn't I just say gardener? The right timing, promoting growth, planting, where there is fertile soil, use the word fertile soil already, and allowing the soil to rest and replenish when it needs to. You are being asked to check in with your timing. Now is the time, is now the time for action or rest. It can change quickly, just like the phases of the moon. If you're unsure, that's okay too. Perhaps you are waiting for more light to reveal the way as the moon grows full. All things come in time. I don't have anything else to say about that, to be honest. <laughs> that was um, a magnificent compliment to what was already coming up. So if anything, for me, that's just um, a confirmation of the energy uh, that's being worked with right now. So the next one that's coming out is the Sacred Rebels, um, the Sacred Rebels Oracle. And this is going to represent... Uh, creation, direction, energy, and what you want, wants you. So what you want, wants you. This oracle brings you the message that whether you see it coming or not, your desire is already on its way to you. It is closer than you think, and soon you will be able to see it, touch it, feel it, and enjoy it. You will then become inspired for your next manifestation based on the true desires of your heart. And this, this girl here, she's in her heart space. Pay attention to that. Every time, I want you to notice when you see what you see people doing with their hands. Um, 
the these different poses and ways of like experiencing this girl holding her heart this girl is um you know celebrating or or embracing or allowing like some beauty to be received into her right um this girl is is feeling or experiencing something playing it's very important our posture and our body language very important let's make sure that we are sending clear messages to the universe about what we want because we get not necessarily what we say we want. We get what we lean into. We get what we feed, okay? The next oracle deck I'm gonna bring out is the magical spell cards. And this is gonna represent your flourishing, your stability, and your foundation. Harmony 27. As I create, I will share harmony divine with love and care. So is your intention from your heart space? Because that makes all the difference. That's going to be like where you're, if you feel satisfied with your vision, your creation, is that you're doing it with a harmony and a love or at least a um, when you are expressing yourself, you're doing it to create a harmony and a love. You're doing it to fulfill your true desire of um, peace on the inside of you. A peace that only comes from the inside of you. It only comes with your choices. It only comes, it only comes up out of that fertile soil when the gardener is ready, right? The gardener has to prepare do you really want to manifest another relationship, another job? If you don't know what you want, if you don't have harmony in your soul, do you really, really want another one of the same old experiences that just breaks you open and leaves nothing? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't sow anything back into you. It just drains you. Don't you think it might be a little bit more powerful? to know what you want before you go chasing things. It doesn't mean to make any rash actions, quit things unless you know very clearly what you want or do not want, but, um, or if you're in danger, start to allow your spirit to tell you what's satisfying, what's not on a very subtle level. Everything you experience, every encounter you have, everything you bump into, how does it make you feel just on a subtle level? Does it make you feel nice or not nice? Does it make you feel satisfied or dissatisfied? Just like the slightest, the slightest bit. It doesn't have to be some wild emotional experience. Pay attention to your instincts, your intuition, the hairs that raise up, the gut feelings, you know, if something doesn't feel right or something feels so, so right. I know that we've all made choices that make us doubt our ability to make choices in the future. We all have. We all have done something silly uh, again and again and again and lived out some pattern way too long that we beat ourselves up over thinking that we should have understood it sooner. We should have seen the lesson sooner, but it's just about now. There's no, there's no, going back regardless of if, if you could have done it better. So learn here and now. And if you do go back, examine, be truthful with yourself. That, that harmony that's in your soul is, has to be clear. Okay. What you want does want to come to you, but you have to not only say what you want, you have to lean into things that are more satisfying to you. It really does happen on a subtle level and it changes at a subtle level. It's just tweaking. The next deck out is the Secret Language of Light Oracle. And this is gonna represent your ideas, renewal, mind, your clarity. It says 30, there is only light. Before I put that down, I'm talking about, again, ideas. Look where a lot of this is coming from, okay? We have ideas are coming 
from a higher source, but they're they're coming they're coming straight to you. Okay, so it has a lot to do with your intention and what you focus on. Your ideas, renewal, mind, clarity. Okay, that's within you. All that is within you already. You don't have to seek it anywhere. So let's grab um, grab a couple ideas from the guidebook to see how we can um, lean into this energy, this light energy, and absorb it. It says, greet the sun each day. Breathe particles of sunlight into your chest to lighten the load of your heart. Take deep breaths in and out. Imagine your breath is filled with a, cal a kind of calm and peace. Each breath relaxes you more and more. Go through your clothes and shoes and let go of anything you have not worn for a few years or no longer gives you joy. So that's very like Marie Kondo-ish. How about um, if you're a journaler, it says draw or write a story you often tell that makes you feel sad, bad, or mad. Then ask yourself who you would be without this story. Draw or write a new story that makes you feel glad, great, or at peace. I literally like that. That was really nice. Okay, so here is your final energy. This is your encouragement and your final advice. This is the Starseed Mini Oracle deck. So I don't know if you chose this deck based on that, but this is the little card on top. And so your final advice is surrender. Surrender your need to control the outcome. Just be with life in this present moment. Your soul knows the way. Remember that. This is your guiding your guiding spirit right now, okay? This is my soul knows the way. That's you. Your soul knows the way. And the only way out is through surrender, the need to control the outcome, and just be with life in this present moment. Be with yourself, okay, in your heart. Be playful. Make sure the ideas that are coming in, uh, are they honor you truly. Seek this harmony within your soul. And with everything you experience, this is about perspective. And then what is coming up for you is going to be better <laughs> than you could even imagine. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, stack number two, welcome back. So if you chose this, you were drawn to water, emotions, autumn, possibly this top card. Also feeling, healing, resilience. So that is the base energy of this for you. And then we're going to go up from there. So we're thinking feeling, healing, and resilience. All right. So this card is going to be for very last. It's your very, very last message and advice. The first card we're going to start with is from the Chakra Wisdom Oracle. I'm sorry, not Oracle, Tarot deck. And this is going to represent the center of this. This is going to be the situation or it's going to be you. So uh, in, right now, you represent in this situation is, um, I don't know if you're beginning to surrender, but it's like there's a, you're doing something based on your gut it's, or, or you're waiting for something based on your gut. There's something that you're doing or trusting in maybe even based on a gut feeling that you're kind of waiting to see if that pans out. All right, so we're going to continue to deepen it here with the Divine Feminine Oracle. 
And this is who's gonna be wa like kind of watching over you. This is the, the divine energy that is seeing over your feeling, healing, and resilience at this time. Shakina, the presence of the divine feminine. At the center of everything, there is light and I am that light. You are that light. Okay, do you see? Can you see? That's you and you're holding a beacon. It's like almost like a lighthouse. You're waiting for your ship to come in. You know there's something. You just intuitively know. It's, it's like feeling you have. Okay? There, you're just waiting for it to come to you. So it's coming into you. This is not something that you're going to go get. All right? This is something that you're going to stand and be a beacon and hold this energy and let it come to you. All right, the next card is going to be the Journey of Love Oracle. And this is the card, um, or actually the deck that was chosen in this spot where number two sat in the star. That um, feeling, healing, resilience portal. So this is going to be your guiding card of this entire session. This is all of it is going to is going to be important, but this is going to be your main message. If you take one thing only, take this. Legacy of light, number fifty three. You are acknowledged as a jewel of light upon this earth, an important link in a heavenly chain of divine awakening. This oracle also brings confirmation, if needed, that relationship issues that are arising for you now are not only about your own personal healing, but about healing the emotional legacy of your ancestral lines. To do this, you may wish to journal, dance, or meditate, or dedicate a yoga practice to the healing of your ancestral inheritance, and ask that your own relationships be assisted through the karmic grace of your ancestors to step into more consciousness of love now. I measure time in years, in memories, and good friends. Thanks for helping me to see I can count the special ones on my hands that I can count on you. So that is your guiding card, actually. I'm gonna move it because this is actually, oops, this is actually your guiding card um, in this session. This is representing the, um, this place in the original layout where this is the divine mystery so this goddess is what is representing the divine mystery in the whole this deck is what your your focus message needs to be for this particular session since you chose the portal of feeling and healing resilience the journey of love message is the one for you so that's what you're focusing on if you need to go back and replay it please do the next deck out is going to be the Sacred Rebels Oracle. And this is going to represent the creation, direction, and energy. If you would have chosen that portal, that's kind of what was down here. That's what this will represent for you. Heaven sent. Oh, the light reflection wants to be there. Heaven sent. 33. This oracle brings you a message. Let yourself be helped. Assistance is coming your way, so act on it and say yes. It is very significant as the assistance is coming from the hands of life itself. Trust it. This or oracle also comes with a message that you are to trust in the things that you feel and say to others without knowing why. It moves them. You may not understand, 
but through trust, you are allowing yourself not to overthink and censor yourself. As such, you are able to become a vessel through which the spiritual gifts can be passed to others. Don't block yourself. Let life happen through you. Only benefit can come from this. Okay, so that is a clear direction of energy, creation, right? Let yourself be helped and trust your gut. Let yourself be helped. We're really, we're really kind of zeroing in on this, this um, trusting yourself, trusting your gut, okay? Trusting in things to come. Tr and this may be the help you're looking for, right? You just know something's coming. You don't really even know what it is. But this may be the help that you have been waiting for. And maybe you don't even know that you need the help. Maybe you don't think you need help. But if it feels true, okay, don't, don't make any um, rash actions. But trust your gut what, and what feels true. And if it doesn't feel quite right, trust that too, okay? No, notice. Notice the difference, what your gut tells you about each. So what if um, the wrong sort of energies are attracted to your beacon? It is up to you to notice that. That's your job as a human to play with that energy and to notice, to become aware and to choose to be aware. The next deck is the magical spell cards. And this is gonna represent uh, your flourishing, your stability and your foundation love number one aphrodite i call to thee to be to bring a true love here to me now it says love it doesn't necessarily say romantic love i want you to understand what love is what how love real love true love a true a the true idea of love what that feels like see at, at your heart when you have a clear picture of what true love feels like real unconditional love what that really feels like and what it feels like to and how good it feels and satisfying to reciprocate into that with people who just match and get it who want to play like that. People who don't take advantage just because they could, easily could take advantage of you, but choose not to because it's of their character. Let those people come to you. People who love you for real. People who, who show you and model in action, in real life, what real love looks like, not some bullshit form of it that you learned because you internalized someone else's mental illness or someone else's um, misunderstanding, misperception, they didn't understand you. You're allowed to be whoever you are. And if you hide that, if you refuse to heal that, that's remember, that's the important part of your message. If you choose not to heal that and not to embrace this light, this light, these don't, they don't represent what you think they do unless you heal that. Okay. You might get a relationship that comes in, but it's not going to be one that satisfies you in your soul. It's going to be something disappointing again. It's going to be another, another cycle of the pattern that you've lived out once already or more times, very possibly more times than once. Very, very possibly many, many, many times in different forms with different relationships, people, situations. So, um, notice that, okay. You have to know that what you feed Okay, this is always accessible to you. You are the light that's at the center of you. You carry that at the center of you. You're just unlocking it. Okay, and then it draws in. It draws in this. People who love you for who you are, who honor you and respect you without having to be asked. Just because that's who they are and that's how they treat the people in their lives. Don't you want that? Because I do. I do. 
right, the next one out, I'm sorry, the next oracle out is going to be the secret language of light. And this is going to represent your ideas, renewal, mind, clarity, inner voice. Wow. Vo <laughs> wow. Okay, so, um, wow. The fact that we're speaking about, like, expression, okay, the mind, your ideas. And we're already talking about trusting the inner, the inner source of you. If you don't love yourself, if, or if you have a, misrep a misrepresented idea because of what someone else taught you about who you are, did someone else teach you you weren't lovable? You weren't acceptable just as you are. You have to open yourself up to, who, to the truth. And the truth is locked in here, okay? It only, you're only able to bring this light here out into um, like this place where other people can be illuminated by it, attracted to it, when you start to listen to yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to know that the love starts in your, in your heart space for you first, and then you're able to not only love others truly, but allow others to love you. You may not be able to allow others to love you nor are you going to show a healthy version of love to the the people who are in your life who deserve who deserve it they deserve your best and you're you're refusing to give that to them if you don't tap in and do this work to unlock unlock your power it, it's very very clear it's is in your gut this is in your core of you All right, your final message. This is going to be um, the Star Seed Mini. And this is gonna be your very last message. Dreams. The universe speaks to you through your dreams. So maybe you're not able to trust uh, in your, your core just yet. Maybe you're not at the place where you can feel it and act on it and know it's true, okay? We're talking about your gut feelings. Look for signs in your dreams, whether it's uh, something you actually remember. Uh, maybe start dream journaling, okay? Look into the symbolism of your dreams. Or just pay attention to how you feel when you wake up in the morning. Okay, also pay attention to how you feel when you go to bed at night. Make sure that you are doing something with your mind right before you go to bed that makes you feel nice. And I'm not gonna tell you to not binge watch TV because I love TV. I just need to make sure that I am watching something that's like doesn't make my spirit or my mind, my mind race or my spirit feel unsettled right before I go to bed because that's gonna of course translate right into my dreams. It does not mean that I won't um, focus myself on um, healing something in dreams. That's something that I do very often actually is prepare myself for my dreams um, by meditating on something. It's usually, even if you go on YouTube, there is uh, sleep tones and they're all, there's these different, almost like 12 hour tracks that you can listen to. And it, I don't know if you, that's something that uh, works for you, but just like a sleep sound, sounds of nature, it's just like a really, it can be a really interesting tone or bass um, that can help you rest more deeply. And I really do think that it, it, the, just the sound, sound in general is so powerful, sound healing, sound cleansing, that sometimes if you, especially if you believe in it that can dissolve energy right from your physical body so lean into that also dancing and singing the the different things um that have to do with music and moving your body really really lean into those practices and let it dissolve and then even even see how how does this cycle go okay you notice in your dreams like let's say you're at the place of having nightmares is there some place that you can lean here and then and then tap back into your dream again? Okay, that does. 
It's getting better. Is it getting worse? And, and decide from there, what kind of support are you needing? What kind of support is coming, coming in? Is it friendships? Can you vent this out? Is it professional help? Make sure you are doing what you need to do to really get to this healed, this healing place where you can love yourself from um, a clear place of what love actually is and what it actually looks like. Because if you have a, uh, an idea of love that is askew, uh, you're not going to be able to receive love, receive help, receive healing. And you're not going to be able to trust that what's coming in is going to be for your highest good. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, stack number three, and welcome back. So you chose this, maybe this card, or you chose the idea of creation, direction, energy, fire, passion, summer, okay? Any of those things or any other reason you would have chosen uh, this card right here, number three. All right, so this is your final message for after. It's at the very end, final advice. The very first card out is from the Chakra Wisdom Tarot. And this is gonna be the center, and this is gonna be you, whatever situation is coming to mind. Okay, so um, first of all, we're talking orange. Um, that's not a traditional tarot deck feature. But I think it's very, very helpful at times um, if we don't quite know what's going on or what, what this is referring to. So <clears throat> something where you're feeling maybe stuck, criticized, doubting yourself. This is something of the mind, okay? More than likely, it may of course have emotional, um, emotional components. There may be actual things that are going on in the world or in your life situation that make you feel and think these things, but that's not necessarily true. It's 100% up to you and your um, interpretation of this in your life. But I want you to think like of your sacral chakra too. That is like the lower, the low belly. That's where the womb is. Okay. Um, our like our, our sexual energy center is in that place. So is it something imbalanced there? Are you feeling insecure um, about maybe your body? Okay, relate, it's like an intimate relationship. Something going on in your life that's intimate to you. Um, it could have something to do with creativity. I mean, it doesn't, this could be like a creative expression as well that you're not, that you're doubting yourself or you're feeling criticized. You're feeling that you're, um, <clears throat> Imposter syndrome is one that, as an idea that comes up, I just, if this is just something that you need to know that you're capable, okay? You're more than capable. This is talking about your energy, direction, and creation. And as long as you're stuck in your head, that's going to impact everything that you're able to make and create. It's not going to feel quite as satisfying as you'd like, okay? So let's continue to deepen this. Okay, the next deck. Out is the Divine Feminine Oracle and this is kind of representing um, what is watching over you the whole the divine mystery okay this is the energy energy kind of that's that's watching over you right now I am pure strength I honor my anger by giving voice to it is that anger uh, the creativity and, and authenticity that comes from having your feet planted firmly on the ground, okay? Like you're standing up tall, you know who you are, and you're able to express from that place. If you are not actually um, giving voice, I mean literally giving voice to that anger, you are going to you're still gonna hear it, okay? It's just not gonna be very nice. Other people are not gonna like the way it sounds because it's not gonna be respectful. It's gonna be impulsive. It might be unkind. 
okay? We need to consider how we are um, emoting. It's very important that we're doing it safely, that we give our, ourselves a place to feel it. Your anger is nothing to be ashamed of, no matter what the situation is, no matter if the um, external world would say you're right or wrong, doesn't matter. You feel that, you have to sit with it or it's gonna get you're gonna get stuck in the um, your head about it. I don't know, maybe you're feeling like you're blaming somebody, you're mad that somebody has wronged you, you feel like a victim. Take right, the next card out. This is the Journey of Love Oracle. And this is gonna represent the feeling, healing, resilience portal, okay? This is what that's gonna be about. Devotion to the small. The message of this oracle for you is that your blossoming is occurring now and the Earth Mother has gratitude for your presence within her being, for the work you are doing to help other human beings. She asks for you to surrender any concern you have to her, to let her creative power continue to gently guide you to your rightful place in the world that you may, so that you may shine as you were born to do. In service to the evolution of this planet, she is helping you now trust her. Your service is an intricate part of the evolution of this planet. Focusing on things that you're grateful for right in front of your eyes, picking up a stone, tending to a flower, things that are are seemingly insignificant that most people don't even look at, pay attention. Pay attention to those things. You have to choose to slow down and to notice. Okay, the next card out is from the Sacred Rebels Oracle. And this is going to represent your creation, direction, and energy. This is the card because of the portal that you happen to choose. This um, here, whether you chose it because it was um, summer, south, fire, direction, um, passion, creation, you chose this here. And so this is gonna be the card and the deck actually that I chose to represent that, that area of the reading that's gonna be most vital to you if you take anything from this entire session, take this message. For you in particular, because of the choice that you made, focus on this message, if only one. Legacy of Light, number seven. This oracle is guiding you to something in your family history or spiritual ancestry that is relevant to you now. Your spiritual ancestry can be recognized through the traditions and cultures you are intrigued by and interested in. They do not have to be the same as the spiritual traditions that you were raised with in this lifetime, although they may be. The influence of your family history and or spiritual tradition may be encouraging and constructive but it may also be holding you back. Sometimes we unintentionally absorb the hidden fears of our parents, oh my goodness, or a religious upbringing that, such as a belief that dreams cannot manifest or that we have to compromise to the point of losing what makes us feel truly alive. Wow, losing the feel like, we, oh my goodness. feeling that we have to compromise to the point of losing what makes us feel truly alive. Wow, right there. If you need a jolt to recognize that you are a creative be being entitled to explore your ingenuity, perhaps through taking a class or pursuing your own artistic interests at home, then this oracle brings particular guidance that yes, this is a part of your life path and you are encouraged to take it further. You are also acknowledged through this oracle as having some special creative and healing offering to make to the world in this lifetime. So we're talking about creation, direction, energy. You just need to stop doubting 
what makes you feel alive, okay? Doesn't matter what your family thinks or what your anybody else thinks, what makes you feel truly alive? You are gifted. Okay, you will leave a legacy of light for the greater good upon this planet and you will be lovingly supported in many ways by the great creative universal intelligence when you ask for help. If you don't know how to do that, start here. The next card out is going to be from the magical spell cards. This is going to represent your stability, foundation, your blossoming. Organization. Purpose, planning, efficiency. Now come to me so easily. Purpose, planning, efficiency. Now come to me so easily. Remember that. Use that mantra. If you feel disorganized, maybe that's one of the reasons you're doubting yourself so much is you feel like someone who maybe doesn't have it all together isn't allowed to, to, to slow down. You're not allowed to slow down because you, ha you have to produce. You got to make money. You got to take care of this, this, and this, right? If you are in that cycle and it's making you feel like you like you have nothing to live for or at least depressing you or or um you feel like you're just in a a a um a grind it starts here with the small and maybe in your home because purpose planning efficiency if you're feeling scattered and chaotic start small okay start small I think something about giving this a real voice by just acknowledging that you are allowed to be who you are, standing strong in that, starting small, okay? Organize or plan the, where you wanna start and what your goal is. Why do you wanna do it? You don't have to make money, but do you want to? What, you know, what's your ultimate growth? You, is it just for fun, just for pleasure? Do you want to keep it completely out of that arena? Have a, a completely separate career? Or is that something that you'd like to combine? Is your lifestyle going to be immersive? Or are there going to be different sides to things? Um, you know, how do you want to structure your life and what makes, what makes sense to you? Trust yourself. You have to trust yourself. Because whatever someone else has handed down to you, a belief system, that's what you think is right or that's what you think is true. You don't believe you're allowed to do something different because of the way someone else has taught you. You were basically taught um, something that is skewed, okay? A skewed idea of yourself. You've labeled yourself or internalized something that is not yours to carry. Another person, they may not have meant harm but they may have just thought they were assisting you by giving you constructive criticism uh, or just loving you, wanting you to have an easier time in the world, but they didn't realize how they were wounding you or um, how you were taking on those labels. It's not necessarily their fault, but you can't, you can't live in a victim role forever. If you need to say something, say something. But if you don't need to say something, you don't need to heal that with this person in particular, what you need to be doing is giving voice to it here. Okay, the planning, the devotion to the small, start here. If you don't actually need to verbally address it with someone in your family, focus on your legacy that you're going to leave in this world. The next card out is from the secret language of light. And this is gonna represent your ideas, your mind, your clarity, your renewal. Focus. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> there's a, there's, do you see how many different, there's nine swords there. Uh, that represents so, sort of um, chaotic, splintered mind. Okay. That's, it's not the truth. You're seeing some sort of, of reflection of yourself that is not real in these, these blades. Again, they're splint it's a splintered energy. You're afraid. Focus your energy. 
okay? Focus. Little things. Start with the small, and that turns into this. One thing at a time, that turns into this. Get the help that you need. Get the resources that you need so that you can take all your energy, this splintered energy, and focus it clearly where it needs to go. Be friends with the chaos, kind of like stormy seas. It's okay, okay? It's okay to do one thing at a time. It's okay to ask for help and delegate, um, to ask your family or to hire someone to help you get here. Ask your friends who are good at something for advice. Help people, so you're, or ask people so you can find what brings these blades together and brings you a single point of focus because that's what you need to hear, okay? That's what you need in this space. It's very, very important for you that you are, look even this here, focusing your energy. Look how this, this goes directly up and through it kind of um, through the lineage. It's very, very important that you focus your energy. Don't let yourself be splintered by someone else's expectations of you, okay? Your very last message. Your very last message is gonna come from the Star Seed Mini Oracle. And then this is going to be your encouragement and your final advice. Inner worlds. Your external world is a reflection of your inner world. Wow. <laughs> wow. And this is, um, the energy it, oh, through all of these has been extremely powerful just in this exact same way. Do you see? Um, I want you to start to see how someone's intentions, how their mindset, their perspective, their choice of perspective, their choice of perspective. It's a choice. I know that we may not think we have a choice, but it literally happens one baby step at a time, one baby step at a time, one baby step at a time to start shifting our intentions and the, and the uh, momentum of those intentions of what we're drawing in. You have to slow it way down. Like when the train is moving a thousand miles an hour in the opposite direction that you want to go, you cannot, do you really want it to slam into a brick wall or would you like it to slow down? gradually and that's what you have to think about I know it's um, when we're in a ton of pain and acute pain crisis type of pain where things feel like they're falling apart around us it's tragedy and your body is in crisis your body is in shock your body is like your your nerves are frayed I, I think that it literally is crisis in the form and you can't just uh, shove that down and deny that it's very important um, that you know that if you don't listen, this um, doubt, this mindset that you have, this doubt, this, it's just, it's just a deep, maybe you don't even know where it came from. You may know exactly where this came from, the criticism, the, the um, comment. It could have been uh, something that happened over many years. It could be something that happened once that just cut you deep but you've been holding on to it and holding it so deep that it's turned into something like it's your, your core is just in a knot. Okay. Holding this in this rage and it wants to, it wants to be let go. Is this, a, is this something that you see carried through generations of your family or is there something about this? The criticism, um, the expectations, the, the, um, even anger, issues or mental health is this something that carries through generations and if so or even if not do you have future generations looking to you do you have future generations looking to you do you have future generations looking to you you have to remember that no matter what even if you feel insignificant what you create amplifies into this world who you are important and you are powerful and you are capable. And if no one has told you, I believe in you, it is okay to feel all of it, 
but you have to keep people safe. Do you, you wouldn't want someone lashing out at you for something that's not your fault. And you have to stop um, projecting your anger in ways that are not real. They're not true. It's because of this inner mind situation that you have going on that you're doubting there's something that you internalized and it's created this anger that needs to be released from you. So start with the creativity, even start with the creativity and then the conversations may come later. If you need to have conversations, focus yourself here. Actually focus yourself here. Okay, focus yourself on the small, the creative, the expression. Okay, you're feeling, feeling inside of you, trusting your gut and then ask for help and support if you're feeling scattered. Okay, focus that energy, focus this splintered energy and let your um, inner, that, that part of you that just, you can't seem to get a, a handle on. It's okay, let it be your friend. It's nothing to feel bad about. There's nothing wrong with you. You are a person, you're human. You're here to learn lessons and play. You are here to, to play with the energy at your fingertips. You need to be a little bit lighter with yourself, okay? Even if someone told you you weren't allowed to be, you weren't allowed to slow down, you weren't allowed to focus on yourself, you weren't allowed to play and be creative and express yourself, well, guess what? I'm giving you um, the opposite message of that. You absolutely can just because you're here, just because you exist. You're powerful and magical and creative. Your feelings matter and the energy that you carry in you, the way that you feel about yourself, if you do not um, understand what self-love is, that amplifies into the world. You are valuable just because you're here and just because you exist. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, welcome back, number four. So you were drawn to this idea of stability, material, earth, um, flourishing, blossoming, foundation, winter, the manifest form, or maybe you were drawn to those eyes. And so this is going to be your final advice. The start and the center of your message. This is going to be you or the situation. The hanged woman. So um, also this is talking about the third eye chakra okay so we're talking about perspective um there may be a divine perspective that is being offered to you that um you may have accepted recently or something that you may need to be watching for a shift in perspective um that's being offered to you that feels more true to you more likely feels more true or or um aligns more with your vision for your life than um, what you're you're currently experiencing or that you have experienced in the past. So I can't say where you are on this path. You may have recognized this or not. You may be, um, let's see, are you maybe in this, this mysterious mist, the vo you know, this vortex of mist. You may be, um, you may be in the, you know, coming out of that cocoon. She almost looks like she's a butterfly um, coming out of a cocoon. So think of that, okay? Maybe just let your perspective rest for a little bit. Again, perspective, third eye. Okay, the next message out is going to be from the Divine Feminine Oracle. And this is going to represent the um, whole the who is looking like kind of like what's looking over you the energy that is overseeing you that divine mystery and the big picture plan for your life Ooh, kali this is um side note this is my one of my favorite cards ever this is my first oracle card i ever drew and man she obviously <laughs> obviously had an impact on me hey kali the mother of the universe i release all that doesn't serve me it is time to be the truth 
of who I am. And don't let her uh, scare you. This is the the um, mother of of all life and death, creation and destruction. Okay, so when you think of the balance, that um, image of the the yin and the yang, or the yang, however you like to say it, that's what this is. That's what she is. Creation comes from destruction. Destruction comes from creation. It's an everlasting cycle. Um, death comes from life. Life comes from death. Okay, nothing is ever truly fully destroyed. Okay, something always creates and that the energy never fully goes away. So that's something that you want to think about as well. This is like, um, I'm not quite sure, but it could be a new perspective or a ba more balanced perspective. You may be seeing a polarity um, or opening up to like a perspective that you weren't open to before that may be very different than yours. Um, I don't think that it necessarily <laughs> means that you're going to, you're going to react harshly um, to an, uh, the op opposing perspective, but you're going to know um, what's you and what's not. Okay. You're going to know and you understand deep within you what is from you and what is um, someone else's idea of you that you may have internalized or taken on. Okay. So the next, the next Oracle out is the journey of love. And this is going to rep represent your feeling, healing, resilience, something that you may have gone through or, or maybe going through now. Just the bride offers herself. So this is an oracle from the Divine Feminine offering herself to unfolding mystery. Accept what is being offered now, whether through challenge or an easing of the way forward, there is a gift from the Divine Feminine reaching for you now. Allow her in and be blessed. This oracle also heralds a time of importance in relationship. You have been revealing yourself and not being afraid of who and what you are, sharing yourself and willingness to connect. Your vulnerability and beauty is acknowledged and will attract the response you need at the perfect time and in the perfect way. All right, the next deck out is going to be the Sacred Rebels Oracle. And this is going to represent the creation, direction, and energy for your session. It says 30, the perfection of your life. Have you ever seen a storm pictured from above? It can appear so beautiful and elegant. It is certainly different to the ground view, which can be quite a violent experience. So too, there is great beauty in your life now. However, at this point in the natural process, you may be experiencing it as an anxiety inducing experience rather than beautiful. There may be sense of the internal chaos you may feel something is waiting to erupt from within as a restlessness or an anxiety that you cannot quite articulate, but sense vaguely nonetheless. Perhaps the chaos is full-fledged and a person or situation in your life is causing all kinds of havoc, upheaval, or change and uncertainty in your world. Whether the chaos seems subtle, strong, internal or external, this oracle brings the same message. All is unfolding according to a perfect higher order. You are currently enduring a cosmic spiritual storm, which is having an impact on you. It is clearing things out, ruffling feathers and preparing you, you for that lovely, super fresh, uplifting feeling that one experiences after the storm has finally passed. If you cannot believe that there's anything happening, even at a subtle level, because you feel stuck, denied, bored, thwarted, or stale, this oracle brings you a message also. No matter what appears to be true, there is truth only in the unfolding, creative genius of the universe. You are not forgotten. You have not been looked over. 
You have not been defined, denied, found wanting or rejected as unworthy. The storm that needs to erupt is in your own heart. Do your liberating rain dance. Rage, weep, pray, dance, paint or sing. Express whatever is needed, however it is needed to. Exercise the blocked energy in your heart. Then you will call on the powerful perfection of your life path as it aligns for the next creative turn of the spiral of life. Once again, you will trust and directly experience the flower of life unfolding within you and around you. Whew, man, that was beautiful. I honestly, um, <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't think I can say anything better than that. But we're talking about perspective. We're talking about creation and destruction. We are that's what we're talking about. This storm is something that is going to shift you, that is going to clear the way. It's going to clear all of the debris, okay? And you're going to be able to have a fresh perspective. Say yes to the beautiful new experiences that are coming in. And don't be afraid of what you're leaving behind, okay? Don't be, don't, don't view this as a loss. View this as a life cycle, okay? It's time to shift your perfect, your, um, your perspective and see what your life is offering, all the gifts amidst the chaos. All right, the next deck out is the magical spell cards. And this is gonna represent um, the portal that you chose. So this is the material, the manifest, the stability, your foundation, okay? If you take nothing else from this entire session, this card that represents where, you know, the that bottom point of the star that you chose, this is the message that is meant to be most um, powerful for you, okay? In this particular session, if you take one thing, take this. Divine guidance, whispers from the beings who shine, let their message be clear and kind. Clear and kind. This entire situation that we're talking about here is about a divine perspective that you're being shown. That was the very first message that we began with. A, you're being given a divine shift of perspective, like a butterfly um, that just came out of the cocoon. You've never experienced being a butterfly before, okay? You went in, you remember what it's like to be a caterpillar. You need to take note from a perspective that, that is, you're not familiar with. That's seeing the gifts amongst the storm. That's take, surveying the rubble and picking up what you have and moving forward with it, okay? This is not a loss. This is a gift. Whatever it is, I, I'm sorry if it hurts you um, deeply and for what you've gone through, because I know um, it can be a very, very ugly <laughs> experience. And it is at some point for every one of us an ugly experience, you know, going through a spiritual awakening or a, um, an awakening of any kind that's brought from a higher power because it's a, a perspective that we just did not have the capacity to absorb before. And so it's very jarring sometimes and we can fight and fight and fight and fight. So, um... I just hope that you choose to take the guidance that you've chosen for yourself. Quite honestly, this can be outside of you, but also it's, it's within your heart space. All right. Um, the next oracle we have out is the secret language of light. And this is going to represent your ideas, renewal, mind, clarity, divine animals. This is gonna represent soul companions along your journey. 
and we all know what that's like to connect with some sort of animal, to have a spirit animal that represents us, um, to have a pet that was meaningful us meaningful to us or a class pet, um, a frog in a creek somewhere, <laughs> you know, we all know what this is like to connect with an animal and to spend time with your pet or in the company of any animal to realize that the same light that flows through you flows through all living creatures. We all create different containers for our soul experiences, depending on our internal desires, our individual desires and dreams when we are coming into this life experience. Humans experience greater contrast than animals. That is why our influence and creations are wider reaching. However, this is also makes it easier for us to split and stray from our hearts. Animals reflect the divine, lo the divine love that we are. When we are around animals, it is easier to move into alignment where we can be inspired to grander creations. People often believe they receive unconditional love from an animal. As an animal is more likely to be aligned with its soul instinct and doesn't need you to be different to, from, from who you are for you to feel loved, you will feel free to be who you are in the company of an animal. When you emulate this behavior for yourself, life becomes more relaxed, loving, and your relationships will catapult to a whole new level of joy. All right, remember I told you this is your very last message. This is your encouragement and your final advice from spirit. Intuition. So trust your intuition. It has been guiding you to the answers that you seek. Okay? This has a lot to do with just letting your perspective shift, allowing um, new perspectives to come into your space. They may be physical, divine feminine, okay? A, a, a woman in the manifest, um, you know, a, a human person <laughs> that, that may um, come into your life. It may be an animal, maybe a pet um, or a spirit animal that you connect with. Um, it may be just another different type of spiritual experience in nature. But this is a divine, um, a divine experience that you're being offered to shift your perspective, to see the gifts and the beauty of your life and to allow that, to allow that to be... Um, supported through your relationships through the experiences that you say yes to okay it might be something about um getting a pet don't tell your kids i said that and so just be sure to no matter what you're experiencing out in the external listen um be, be raising your eyes up above what the fray is okay don't listen to everything or pay attention to everything that's going on around you there is a lot of chaos always right here in front of our eyes but when we lift our eyes that's when we see um a sunset or a sunrise that's when we see the moon we see these things that we may not yet notice um if we are moving too quickly okay or if we're too focused on the destruction we don't see the gifts Thank you so much for being here. Hello, stack number five, and welcome back. So you were drawn to air, mind, communication, spring, um, ideas or renewal, the mind, clarity. Okay, or maybe you were drawn to this image here. And that's gonna be your final message. Okay, so at the very end, we'll see the final advice um, from the stack you chose. The very first message is going to be um, the center of our reading. This is from the Chakra Wisdom Oracle. I'm sorry, not Chakra Wisdom Oracle, Chakra Wisdom Tarot deck. And this is going to be the center of your reading, you or the situation. Okay. 
the Knight of Swords. Um, this is, it might be a new perspective, quick new perspective or a new um, idea that's coming in or even a person with um, fresh ideas that's coming in. Didn't we just talk about ideas? The um, suit of swords is talking about um, the mind, about clarity, ideas. Okay, just the same. It is the, it represents air. So it's perfect for um, what you chose. So this is something moving forward or coming in quickly. Okay, it might not be a fully developed idea. This may be something, it's not a brand new idea, but you're working things out. Okay, you're just starting out with this. It's fresh for sure. Um, also, we're talking the blue, we're, um, the chakra wisdom tarot uses a color coding system for the chakras. And so this would represent the throat. Um, this is going to talk about like anything having to do with your self-expression. Okay. And then we'll get a little bit more detailed as we go along. Not a little more detailed, but a lot more detail. <laughs> so the first deck out is going to be the Divine Feminine Oracle. And this is um, the deck that I chose to represent here. The whole of uh, the Divine Mystery. And this is who kind of is looking over you at this point in this journey. St. Bridget, Our Lady of Exalted Light. I give endlessly because my light is without end. My soul is all I need. And I love how these cards, these cards, um, I know they're supposed to look like they're beaming, but they really do light up in the camera. I just love it. So this is definitely saying that this is something that is definitely is soul, a soul connected idea. This is a meaningful idea to you. This isn't frivolous. It's not just something you're going to do just because, uh, it's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of creativity. You're going to have to want to keep pouring in. Again, this is like, like you said, renewal. You're going to want to keep pouring into this idea. Uh, so you're going to need the capacity to do so. And that means that you have to be, your heart space has to be prepared. Your mind is going to want to take off in all sorts of directions quicker than um, you're able to keep up. And... It doesn't, if you've lived through that a time or two, jumping into things too quickly, um, you start to realize that that's not always the best idea. Unless you know what you're doing, you're not in the phase of this where you need, where you should jump in too quickly. Okay. Start with a foundation of like replenishment from your soul. You want it to be a self-fulfilling cycle from um, whether it's up through your chakras, whether it has to do with your expression. Um, you, you need to keep fueling yourself all the way through or this isn't gonna work out for you, okay? You will be able to give and give and give and give when something is this meaningful to you, when the, the passion is there but if it's not, if it, the idea isn't the right one or you're not giving or creating from a place that is soul based, you will burn out. OK, or your mind will um, you'll change your mind. OK, the next oracle out is going to be the journey of love. And this is going to represent feeling, healing, um, resilience the Christ flame. You got really interestingly um, biblical references. You know, just even, it's really interesting. So I wonder if that, that means something to you. This is also meant for you. I don't know, that could mean, um, that could be weighted in a good way or weighted in a bad way. Depend, not, and I don't mean that um, this concept is a concept okay like this is a a very subjective belief everything is subjective belief this is subjective belief whatever you believe about what we're doing here is is your own perspective okay so 
it, whatever it means something to you if this is like let's say triggering something because you had a some side of sort of poor experience within the church that could be something that is calling you to heal it as well so so remember that this may be like this new um perspective or perception of something you need to heal deep within you it may be or, or a clarity an increasing clarity about something that you need to heal within you before you can truly um deliver from this soul place okay so whether this the this concept um uplifts you and encourages you or triggers something in you remember that's a completely subjective experience and there is wisdom and lesson in everything that was given to us so try to um just be be allowing and open to any messages you're receiving okay you are a part of the wave of awakening happening on the earth now you are exactly where you are meant to be and doing exactly what you are meant to be doing keep going okay keep going this the flame that's the light of your soul okay make sure this this is passionate compassionate ready make sure the cause is what lights the flame in your soul and you will never have a problem fueling your idea you will never have a problem bringing that light and passion because it's here, it's inside of you. It's righteous, okay? You're out in the world doing things that you believe in and that is exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Though the awakening of Christ within brings greater closeness to the divine and therefore greater love and depth of compassion, it too can bring sadness, righteous anger, and a passionate need to contribute positive healing action and change in the world. You may, be, you may be an introspective soul who does this through mastering their inner world with meditation and yoga, raising your own vibration with the absolute intent that this bring healing to the world around you. You may be an extroverted soul that thrives in sharing messages and living a life of dynamic action in support of the causes that are worthy and moving you to brave, capable, feeling of divine outrage and responding with inspired action from your heart. You may be a combination of these soul types and choosing wisely what you consume, which companies you support, which telev television you do or do not watch, what is read, and what you want to have around you, what you choose through your actions, internal and external. This is the Christ flame igniting within you, setting the world aflame with the fire of divine love. You are connecting to the universal Christ consciousness and your heart is meant to awaken as a sacred heart, bearing the Christ flame of divine love this lifetime. All right, the next oracle out is gonna be the sacred rebels oracle. And this is going to represent creation, direction, and energy. Big, bold, vision okay vision big bold vision we're talking about the mind expression and you're being directed not to not to think small whatever fire you have inside of you is like is 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 the is divine it is meant to change the world I mean, look at what the what came in the wake of of Christ. No matter what your viewpoint is, you are probably aware. You're probably aware, at least on some level, of this story. Are you not? On some level, whether you know the truth or not, whether I know the truth or not, okay, we're aware of it on some level, and that's how massive it was. That's how massive the Christ movement was, okay, and is. If you have that power in your soul, what would you do with it? What would you do if you could focus 
your mind on whatever that is that lights up your soul? What would you do? What could you do if this like was a self-fulfilling cycle? Do you see the, the flame in your, in your core? Okay. You're healing whatever this is so you can be um, passionately and righteously moving forward into the world that fuels your fire, that, that directly, like where do you think the ideas are coming from? Okay, the ideas come from this focus, this sharp focus, and where, where are you focused? The light of your soul, your flame, and that creates what a vision that, that maybe you have no idea what you are capable of yet. Maybe you've seen a glimpse. I don't know where you are in your experience, but you may have no idea what you were capable of. Okay. You were not born to play a small role in life. You have the ability to dream big. Even if you have absolutely no idea about how your visions can come to pass or what all the details may look like, you can access the heart and guts of a vision by tapping into your wildest dreams and surrendering attachment to exactly how it will all work out. The details are up to the creative genius of the universe. The creative genius of the universe that is in your soul. That's what you're tapping into. You are an active contributing participant, but not the sole player in your life journey. There is something, a vision or an idea that is coming to you you may worry that it is too much for you, but don't worry, it is meant to be yours. Although you might have to make some adjustments you and to make some tweaking as you go along and let go of your limited thinking and open up to a fearless acceptance of bigger, brighter, more radical and more potent possibilities of creatively living your light in the world. Incredible how the message comes together, isn't it? Whew, gives me chills. The next oracle out is the magical spell cards. And this is gonna represent um, your foundation and stability and your, your blossoming. Good cheer. With a kind heart and humor free, May good cheer rule, so mote it be. With kind heart and humor free. May good cheer rule, so mote it be. Okay? That means that we are lighthearted, we are playful. Okay? We are passionate, but we are not so serious. We are not so serious that we can't um, be playful with ourselves, be lighthearted about our mistakes, okay? And maybe we, maybe we choose a wrong path, we take a wrong step, we get set back, okay? Lightheartedness is going to help you keep this ignited because if every time someone rains on your parade, your flame goes out, you'll never, you're never going to be able to have this self-fulfilling cycle. I give endlessly because my light is without, my, without end. Your soul is not fueling itself because every time someone rains on your parade, your light goes out. That's never going to work for you. I'm sorry to tell you that, but perspective perspective and intention things start there your whole life shifting your whole life starts there starts from that place of intention to be satisfied to be happy do you want to be happy you can say that but if you keep poking um you keep poking around in places that you shouldn't be and looking for acceptance or attention from people that don't deserve to criticize you, even constructively, to be quite honest, what do you think is gonna happen to you? 
You don't need, you. it honestly doesn't matter what they think of you. You don't need to know what they think. Whoever they are, you don't need to know what they think. Do you wanna know why? Because you are not meant to be small in this world. Your, your passion, your potential is that of the divine. Only you can harness this. Only you will take off with this big, bold vision. It is your idea. It is your gift. Be lighthearted with yourself and go after it. All right, the next card out is from The Secret Language of Light. This is going to represent um, your ideas, your renewal, your mind, your clarity. So this is based on the, the, um, the, the stack that you chose. And so this is going to be your most powerful message. Um, if you take nothing else from this, which I really hope you're taking a lot from this. But if you take nothing else from this, I want you to remember this message. This is going to be what's most powerful for you. Soul writing and look again look at the angel especially wings um here too relating to air a higher perspective will unveil and reveal what was previously unknown you may be surprised shocked or embarrassed that the story you have identified with is not what you thought it was don't stress this indicates that the stories are shaking loose. Healing is occurring. You are doing so well. You are worthy and you are loved. All right, our very last message. Don't let me get back to this. This is gonna be your final advice and encouragement. Nope. Gratitude. Universal love shines through the miracles of life all around you. So we have a lot of messages about, about the light within you, the flame, okay? This divine flame within you that you are accessing here, all right? You have access to it. You're being given instruction um, that you have access to this. Okay, look into soul writing. Look into that concept, soul writing, and see if that's something that helps you to um, ignite or reignite this flame inside of you, to finally trust that it is divine. Your ideas are divine. Your passion is, is a creation of this energy, okay? It's welcome. It's okay to be bold or be bigger, to stand out. Be light with yourself. Be grateful for all the opportunities that you're being given and shown. Be grateful for the ideas. Don't be afraid to express them. All right, and since this is the top of your message, I'm gonna give you a little bit more. So it says, um, the reflections and actions for the soul writing. I want to get into that a little bit more. Open any book or magazine to any page. Close your eyes. Breathe in and out. Then open your eyes and read the first thing that piques your attention. This is a message from your soul. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense. Just trust that you will understand in the following days. Okay, so that's one idea of how to lean into this. There's no need to give meaning to everything. Just enjoy the creative process. Ride the wave of now and feel the perfection of this moment. The only limits are the ones in your mind. The only limits are the ones in your mind. The only limits are the ones in your mind. That's amazing, right? Teach through example. Words don't teach. The life experience does. When you align with your soul, you have access to its wise resources. When you align with your soul, align your mind with your soul. From this place, you can inspire others to reach for their own alignment. Be grateful for the perspective that you have. Be grateful for the gifts. Do not be afraid. If you feel the passion, <laughs> 
trust it. Okay, trust it. Go for it. Listen to the messages of your own soul. And if you don't know how to access those, come on back here and we can always give you some more ideas. Thank you so much for being here.